Hello everyone! For quite a long period of time, my free Blender add-on for ShapeKey transferring called ShapeKey Wrap hadn't received updates. But recently, a lot of changes have been made, both visually and functionally. And just a reminder, this is an open source add-on, so you can contribute to this development if you want to. Let's go step by step. Installing the add-on is the same as installing most Blender add-ons. Download the add-on from Gumroad or GitHub. It comes as a zip archive, no need to unzip it. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, then click the drop-down menu in the upper right corner. Select Install from Disk. Find the downloaded zip file and confirm the installation. If the add-on isn't automatically activated, just turn it on. All interaction with the add-on happens through the end panel. It is the side panel in Blender, you can toggle it by pressing the N key. You'll find the shape key wrap menu under the tools. It is divided into three sections, transfer shape key, utils and shape key list. Let's start with the main section. For most cases, the default surface deform parameters work well. We'll go over the method and use bind noise options later when dealing with tricky cases. Now let's talk about falloff and strength. These are parameters from Blender's surface deform modifier. If the source and target meshes are very close, these settings don't make much of a difference. If you want to learn more, check Blender's official documentations for surface deform modifier. To transfer shape keys, we use this button. Let me show you how it works. In my case, I want to transfer shape keys from the body mesh to clothing items. The body has shape keys, but clothes don't. So I select all objects that should receive shape keys while holding shift. Then I select source object last. This is important. The last selected object gets a yellow outline while the others are outlined in orange. It happens because Blender distinguishes between two different states of selection, active and selected. The shape keys will be transferred from a single active object to multiple selected objects. Also notice this info box, it gives us detail about the upcoming transfer. Now I click transfer and it is done. When I move the body shape key slider, the clothes follow the deformation. By default, shape keys on the clothing are linked to the body's shape keys. That's why their values are highlighted and can't be changed manually. This is because drivers are automatically added. Sometimes it's really useful, but sometimes you might want to control shape keys separately. If you want independent shape keys, just untick add drivers before transfer. This way, no drivers will be created. But let's say you already transferred with drivers and now want to remove them. No problem, just go to the util section and click delete drivers. And if you need drivers, but you forgot to add them during transfer, you can add them in any moment. Just select the object that should be driven, then select the object that will drive it and click add drivers in the util section. And it will link the shape keys values by their names. The next parameter, by default, override shape keys is turned off just for safety reasons. But personally, I always enable it. If something goes wrong, you might override your existing shape keys. If the target object doesn't have any shape keys, nothing changes. But if you already has shape keys with the same names, the old ones will be replaced. If the override option is disabled, the transferred shape keys will be added with numerical indices if a shape key with the same name already exists. You might also notice that the t-shirt gets four shape keys while the body originally has five. Well, this happens because of delete empty option. For example, in my case, the egghead shape key didn't transfer, 
because it only affects the head and shouldn't deform the clothing. If delete empty is checked, shape kits that don't change the mesh significantly will not be transferred. If you want to keep all shape keys, even ones with tiny changes, just disable delete empty. You can also delete unnecessary shape keys manually without transferring from any mesh object in Blender. I'll create a few shape keys that don't change the mesh just to show you. Now go to the util section. Here we have the delete empty operator. Click it and all shape keys that don't meet the threshold will be removed. The corrective smooth option helps smooth out transitions and even add a bit of space. For example, look at this area. There's a slight distortion. If I enable smooth, it looks better. And just like before, this tool can be used separately on any mesh that has shape keys. Just select the mesh and find corrective smooth in the utils section. Everything we have done so far has processed all shape keys, but we don't always need that. If we want to work with only specific shape keys, we can enable the use list option. This feature is available for almost all actions. Once this option is activated, we need to load the shape key list from the active object. Let's make sure that the source object is active. It has a yellow outline. This confirms it's selected correctly. Now we press one of the options, refresh, check all or uncheck all. We use refresh when we have recently created additional shape keys for the target object and don't want to reset everything to everything checked or everything unchecked. By pressing refresh, all shape keys that already had specific settings applied in the list will keep those settings. Finally, let's talk about troubleshooting. Sometimes the transfer doesn't work because of the enable to surface deform modifier issue. Honestly, 99% of all support requests are about this. And it is not a bug in ShapeKey Wrap, but we know how to fix it. ShapeKey Wrap is based on Blender's native surface deform modifier. So if something goes wrong, we need to check the usual reasons listed on the official Blender website. Now let's see how to check the common issues. In the util sections, we have tools to check for edges that have three or more linked faces. It looks something like this and it is not OK. If we click validate, the add-on will show a message that invalid edges are found. And if we switch to edit mode, those edges will be automatically selected. So you may fix them. And the same goes for concave faces. A concave face looks like this and surface deform modifier doesn't like them. The good news is that triangles cannot be concave just mathematically. So if you don't want to fix these faces manually, simply triangulate the source mesh and it might solve the problem. But if after all, you still get in the same error, don't worry, we have a special cure. You can switch to the squeezy pixel algorithm, which usually doesn't have any problems with binding. Now you might ask, why don't I use this algorithm by default? Well, the answer is simple. The algorithm is very simplified and less accurate compared to Blender's default source of default modifier. If the source and target vertices are very close, you probably won't notice any difference. But if they are not close, like with loose clothing, the differences might be visible. So in most cases, I recommend using Blender's default algorithm and only when it's absolutely not working, try switching to mine. And finally, about bind noise option. This was an old workaround I used before writing my own algorithm. In simple terms, it just adds a bit of noise to the meshes when binding the surface deform modifier. It is not strict and not very reliable, but it helped me a lot 
back when there was no clear reason why the binding not working. But now the custom algorithm is fast and efficient, so here's my recommendation. First, use Blender's default algorithm. If you get unable to bind error, try to check and fix the mesh. And only if nothing else works, try switching to my custom algorithm. And if that doesn't help, try to add a bit of noise. So if you find this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe to the channel and also join our Discord community. Thank you for watching. See you next time.